everyone, and welcome to day three of World's 2022 Group Stage, live from the Hulu Theater at Madison Square Garden in New York City. After an undefeated 3-0 day by both the LEC and the LPL yesterday, it's time to figure out which region will take all the glory on our third day of groups. I'm joined today at the State Farm Analyst Desk Ooh. by Dag Deck Chronicler and Jack. Yeah, that's right. We got three that's big raids on the shots. desk today. Not just two. Lots of fandom in the arena as well. People have already been popping off, ready for six full games of action to take place today. But before we get into what's ahead of us today, it's always wise to reflect on what broke down just yesterday. And I'm going to start on a positive note for those of okay. us here in North America. We're trending in the right direction. And you might be thinking, wait, that doesn't make any sense. Well, on day one, we took three losses. Yesterday, there was only two. Okay. So by my count, we're moving in the right direction, my friends. <laughs> Things are looking up for NA today. I appreciate the scattered applause for that, <laughs> <laughs> that small math it's joke. Yeah. We take the wins where you can find I, them. I Dad. hope it's one or zero. I, I will also say just the, the crowd here and the environment has been so awesome for Worlds. I it mentioned has. yesterday, I want to mention it again. And C9 definitely hasn't found their footing. We'll get into that when we cover their games. I think they do have some things they can tweak in their drafts to play more towards their player strength. And group stage is pretty long. It's a two-week tournament. So there's plenty of time for NA to still pick up wins. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, while we're down and out as NA fans, it's nice to know that we're not alone. The LCK is there to keep us company. <laughs> yeah. I never thought that, that was going to be the case, but here we are, Dash. <laughs> Um, it is a, a pretty historically uh, bad day for the LCK. Uh, it, it brings back the specter of 2018, mm -hmm. a year that any LCK fan uh, w would rather forget. And, I, okay, you went 10 and 8 in 2018. But they started 1 and 4 on the first two days. Okay. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. So. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm not one to overreact to best of ones. I think Domon in particular still looks very good. But even with all that faith that I still have in my teams, um, it's not the the beginning that I was expecting to group stage, unfortunately. Yeah, I think your point stands, though, uh, Jat, when we think about which of the two regions yeah. is probably more likely to turn yeah. it around and on a dime, <laughs> you would look to the LCK. But here's a refresher on the standings. Yesterday, we did get our first look at Group C with Rogue and Top Esports each taking the first wins of that group. Fnatic jumping to the top of the table, though, in Group A at 2-0, looking fairly dominant. JDG doing the same. And then, of course, over in Group D, we'll get another look at those rosters as they step on the stage today. Yeah, I mean, he's an LPL man who moonlights on LEC. This is going great for me. I don't know what all the down and out here is. This has been a wonderful time over here. Yeah, there's a reason we didn't let you speak until just now, Dagda. Okay? Yeah. <laughs> you got to let the rest of us wallow a little bit uh, before we get to it. So, uh, from here, I want to talk about some champions. And we've noticed something uh, throughout these first couple days of play. For all the conversation, Dagda, about dead champions left and right, nerfed into the dirt, it's spooky season here in NYC. Yeah, Worlds has definitely had a bit of a revitalization with some of these champions coming in, especially looking at things like the Lucian Nami, right? We saw that with the nerfs to Nami, the Electrocute not proccing as easily. Then we saw a star, all right, well, this just isn't going to be a thing anymore. But instead, we're seeing it come back with like Summon area on the Nami, the first strike still for the Lucian, and has become so strong in the bot lane. We've seen Fnatic use it, RNG use it, even looking over towards uh, teams like Rogue as well, having success with this champion. Then you look at it as well at other things that we've started to see creep up on the bot side as well. For Yumi, a combo that we also expected wasn't going to be coming through so hot. They've started to see more and more presence in that bot side as well as teams haven't been able to punish the Sivir as early in the laning phase and allowing her to still scale to that later portion of the game. And finally, Poppy. We all were like, oh, you know, Poppy's clear has been hit. She just can't keep up with these players anymore. She can't keep up with any other junglers. But with Sejuani, Maokai, these kind of things coming back into the meta, we know that slow clear speed can't be punished as easily. And she's popping off against some of our meta picks. Uh, so I really only have one question that comes off the tail end of this. What's it going to take to Necro Corky and bring him back? No. Yeah. No. It is I mean, it No. Is I mean... No. No. Corky no. is here. Corky 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 is here. He was 100% win rate yesterday. All I'm saying is there's only one man for the job, right? And that would be Corky. Or Rice. Or Rice. <laughs> I don't, I, <laughs> which one's more likely? I think Corky is more likely. Okay, there you yeah. have it. We'll see if any of the I actually think we'll see Corky. All right. At some point during Worlds. Right, not necessarily yeah. today. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fair yeah. enough, fair enough. All right. As you may have noticed, uh, the three of the guys here on the desk are all uh, carrying a whiteboard in front yeah. of them. We thought in order to work back through the groups and talk about some of what we've seen over the first two days, we'd play a little bit of a game. So we're going to pull each of the group standings up one at a time, and I'm going to ask them two questions. First is, what storyline within this group has matched expectation through the first two days of play? So we'll start with group A. What in this group has gone the way you expected it to 
coming into the tournament. We'll follow that up with the biggest surprise for each of these guys. So they're going to go ahead and write down their answers. Looks like we have them. It's time for the reveal of matched expectation for each of you three. Let's see here. We got Cloud9 at the bottom. <laughs> Put that down. Did we Put win? that down. Yeah. Match. <laughs> Let's go. Oh, we got over here. <laughs> Boom. Cloud9 also at the bottom. <laughs> yeah. I don't like this game They're anymore. They're going down. No, no, no. I don't we're, like this we're, game we're anymore. Good. All right, here fine. We go. you two explain. <laughs> you were so confident yeah. Cloud9 would be at the bottom? Yeah. yeah. I thought Fnatic looked pretty good coming in from planes. I was like, seeing that revitalization, they look good towards the end of the split. And then, I mean, you're up against LPL, LCK. How else are you going to do it? I, I personally, after the play-ins, thought that Fnatic looks a lot hotter. Uh, and unfortunately, for me in particular, uh, as Jet pointed out, that has been the case. Yeah, I mean, that's going to be the kind of day it is. Mine is just T1 Ego Big, which is just they, they're going to draft to outplay people. They're Ego big. drafting right yeah. now. All right, we'll see if anyone can put that Ego in check. They have taken a loss, so I would expect them to maybe uh, rework some of those strategies. From here, we go to the biggest surprise of Group A. Gentlemen, please, with your markers. All right. Wow, Ooh, I like it. The crunch oh. is going with all the graphs oh my and God. the logos. Yeah. The graphs and the logos, okay. I feel like I need to redo <laughs> mine now. I already got, I got a quick peek at these. I love them. Let's get the reveal. Flip them over, gents. Woo. We've got Fnatic on the rise, Fnatic at the top, and then for, for Jat, naturally, Cloud9 and last is the biggest surprise. Was I the only one surprised by this? I'm surprised by it. I mean... I just had to counter it out. I know. It's actually the reality of this group, I think, for many was that I think it was Zale who said it on day one. You could have just randomized like the order and it oh. would have there would have been a logical yeah. way to get there, right? And so but for the two of you, it really was the play in's performance that gave you the faith once they got to the group stage. Fnatic would be at the top. They'd be taking down teams like oh, EDG no. and T1. I no. did not expect this at all. This is the thing. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, like, but this you was said not... they were so good at play ins, it gave you confidence. It was. But this T1 and EDG the that group. Much that's much not how this is supposed to go. Okay. All right. Yeah, that was my take as well. I'd expect him to do very well in the group, um, but them taking down T1 in the fashion that they did uh, yes. was not in my line of expectation. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Of all of the players on the team, is there somebody who you feel like is is the main reason why they're uh, surprising you? Ooh, very tough to pick out one specific That's player fair. with Fnatic because it's always a coin flip between either Humanoid and Upset. I'm going to go with Humanoid. I think that he has been by far uh, the most outstanding player on the team from the beginning of play-ins up until right now. Every single time he's looked incredibly strong. Big shout out to Razork as well. I think this guy's been stepping up massively from playoffs now into Worlds as well. This guy has been such a big proponent to their early success and even things like the Poppy coming back into meta, you know how strong he's going to be in this chat. I was going to say, the, the willingness to bring that pick back when we thought it was dead and perform on it from here. Or actually, before we jump over to Group B, we may as well hear from one of the Fnatic players themselves, Wonder, on his thoughts on facing T1 and their opponent today in EDG. Hello, I'm Wonder. I play top lane for Fnatic. I tried to have some banter with, with Faker, but he did not notice me in the chat. He did not pay attention to what I'm saying, so I think I'm a little bit in his head. No, actually, I don't know. Like, I was trying to get really creative with my, with my banter with T1, but it's really hard to say anything when they're like so accomplished. But since I've, I guess, beat them so many times, I feel like uh, why wouldn't it be possible this time around? And uh, it helps that they are not e even considered uh, the best in their own region at this point. It's uh, it's for sure way more winnable. Fnatic dethroned T1 in the group. Fnatic undefeated at Worlds. EDG has had a lot of accomplishments lately. In the past, they were not usually a top team. They went to Worlds a lot of times, but they were always beatable by European teams, I'd say. Now they look a bit stronger, but with our form and how we are looking like, I think we should be able to beat them. Hopefully it's a good game and not just a, a stomp like uh, our last two games. He wants a good game, not just a stomp. I don't know, if I were a Fnatic player, I'd probably just want to stomp through the rest of the groups. Let's not forget that their opponents today in EDG are the defending world champions. And for some reason, that seems easy for people to forget. But we'll move right along to Group B. Refresh on the standings for you all as these guys jot down what their matched expectation was in this group. And as we're, appears we're ready, we'll come back on camera. We'll get the reveal, gents, please. Looks like we got JDG good. JDG easy win and Nuggery oh, easy four, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> I never worried about JDG at any point in time throughout any of their games. Really? Yeah, not even really. No, no. easy. Really? Shush you. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> I was going to say, because we keep teasing this team as the team <laughs> yeah. that you don't know what's going to happen until they just win the game. Nuggery 0-4-0 renekton. That was an expected uh, yeah, I result mean, th for you? This, I'm going to be honest. This was a little bit emotional for me just because both these guys uh, decided to say that they expected NA to be last place. So I mm. <laughs> decided to go a little bit back. You're ganging up on me? Just a little bit. Why just me? Yeah, because you Cause went we're winning. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. I see how it is. All right. Yeah. How about those biggest surprises? Those biggest surprises out of Group B. Jack, you really thinking about this one? I know. Everything's kind of gone. You had, a whole, you had a whole night to prepare. So these much ideas. of this is so much of this group has gone to expectation. <laughs> to be honest. Okay. Fair yeah, enough. Yeah. Fair enough. All right. Let's see here. We got a couple of the guys ready. We could probably get their reveals. Jack. Jack will join if he if, I mean, he, if, if, he, if anything comes, comes to, to mind. All right. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. Let's get that flip. <laughs> okay. E D. EG, good. Looking good against JDG. Ah, yeah, yeah. okay. That, that was a surprise to you. <laughs> yeah, they oh. looked genuinely really, really impressive. And I was like, this is actually a team that can compete with the best of them. So it's, I think it's a little bit unfortunate where they're sitting in the tables because after that JDG game, I genuinely think they could contest to actually get out of this group. I think okay. uh, many consider that still to be the best looking game out of the NA teams, even though it's been losses across the board for us. What do we have here? We have uh, Dom Juan uh, form looking up. Yeah, I really want to highlight that even though there were a lot of arguments we made for why Domwon would look a lot better. Uh, their entire year has just been very up and down. And with the mana trending in their direction, I don't know if that alone would have been enough. So I'm really happy to see the individual, uh, individual performance of the team, particularly Showmaker and Canyon also looking better. Uh, Renekton's notwithstanding. And I'm actually, I'm very intrigued by yeah. this one, as I just too saw you Varus. Too much Varus. So specifically yeah, yeah. Group B, you think, yeah. is prioritizing this champion too much. Yeah, a little bit of EG. They just like hard long mm. Varus blind both games, maybe over relying on lane prior when I, I would need to look at the drafts again, but Kalista very strong. He was a great Lucian player. Lucianami is something that the European teams were able to use to a lot of success. I want him to switch it up a little bit. Yeah, trend, trend for the NA team seems to be a struggle yeah. with the read on the meta. As we move on over to Group C, let's refresh on those standings. These guys will write down what match their expectations here. This is a, a tougher group. Only one we, game. We've yeah, only yeah. seen one game out of each of the teams. It's Rogue and Top Esports who took the wins, DRX, and Gam Esports who fell down just yesterday. Looks like these guys are just about ready. I'd also, I'd like, I'd like to appreciate uh, Chronicler's handwriting as well. Yeah, it's uh, really good. Very, it's very pretty. I've never heard that in what? my entire life. On a whiteboard, I, really, I mean. Yeah. I think it's the whiteboard helping. Okay, yeah, yeah, that definitely can help. All right, let's get that reveal in three, two, one. Boom. We got DRX top side, but a sad face. Yeah. Explain. Well, my expectation was that the top side would be a problem. <laughs> and, yeah. and they have been. They just so. match that expectation. Every, every, they match that expectation. Yeah, like no. in, in what way? Well, in what way? In play-ins, there were a lot of people telling me, oh, why are you guys from the LCK kind of down? Isn't Deft amazing? Yes, he is. Isn't Zeka super good? Yeah. Beryl? Not running it at all. But the top <laughs> side of the map is just a really big problem for DRX. We didn't see it as much in play-ins besides the mad game. Uh, and seeing it come out now in full force, I think, is really in line with what the LCK expected from this team. You set a high bar for Barrel there. <laughs> Not running it down. All right, yeah. TES win. Easy. Expected. Yeah. Expected. Yeah. It must be Same nice thing. being from the LPL. Top, top. Yeah, and we'll, we'll jump. We'll jump on that train anytime <laughs> we can. From here we go to the biggest surprise. I regret, I'll get this, I regret writing you are this much. I, I mean, your handwriting's great, but your, your erasing game yeah, yeah. could use some work here. It's very bad. I hope you guys don't see it. It's, uh, it's, it's, it's kind of a tragedy. Uh, all right, what are we thinking? What are we thinking in terms of the biggest surprise out of Group Boom. C? Boom. I like how quick Jad is, and, and we're not waiting for a reveal call anymore. Yeah, I was slow last time, so I wanted Com to get Com number one. Yeah, yeah. The Lucianami was cracked, and I know I'd obviously seen him succeed in playoffs, but the path that he's been on to maintain that moment momentum from the end of the LEC playoffs to what he did in game one of groups was very actually impressive and surprising to me. Okay, so I'm actually going to jump over here then uh, just because of the relation to uh, Rogue. Yeah, surprise. Um, so <laughs> the, 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 the main thing for me is not just that Rogue won, but how good they looked. Because mm. uh, talking to a lot of the LEC guys, I think the storyline of Rogue was very similar to what Gen G went through where they're always playing second fiddle. A lot of, tea, a lot of people still... They don't really have a lot of faith, and I think they have a lot to prove in coming in with 
games as dominant as they have thus far, I think uh, is really, really cool. And that was something that I wasn't sure whether they could cash in on. So then hopping over to you, Dagda, uh, this has been three years since we've seen GAM or the VCS on the international stage and uh, leaving something to be desired for you. Yeah, I was a bit heartbroken because when I saw them, I was like, oh, this top esports GAM match should actually be really, really cool. And I was expecting them to kind of play it slow, play towards the strengths and wait until we got to those late game team fights around objectives and to see them go like absolutely throw it all away just going for that quick invade at the eight minute mark was a, bit, a little bit sad because I feel like we didn't get to see enough out of GAM. So the, the biggest surprise for me because I expect more from them and I think we will see more. I'm just waiting for that moment. Yeah, but let's be let's be real. It was kind of fun to watch a Sejuani invade <laughs> on her own yeah. at that yeah. point in the game. Like that was exciting, nonetheless. And it's a very Levi move. Play for jungle. <laughs> From here we go to Group D once again. Here's your reminder of how things are broken down. It's a CTBC flying oyster and Royal never give up atop the table at one and zero. Hundred Thieves and Gen G who are still hunting for their first wins here in the group stage. We're gonna start with the storyline that's mapped expectation for this group. Well, let's see what we got. We can head to the reveal here. Let's get these guys back on camera. Flip those things over, gents. Jat's making his look pretty. Uh, match expectations, <laughs> CFO on top. Well, we had this conversation already, right? The I Overlord's coming in, so uh, we need to acknowledge that they are taking over and yep. that they are just here to stay. You know uh, our 90-50-10s yeah. are looking real good right now. Okay, yeah. so while CFO surprising nobody with their incredible start, it's as well RNG, who I think many did expect to be able to dominate this group. You two fall into that bucket. Well, I wouldn't expect him to dominate the group. I thought that was going to be Gen G, but that didn't quite <laughs> work out. Uh, but what I do really uh, like about RNG is that they have looked better in every subsequent qu uh, game that they've played, and I think that planes really helped them out. Uh, they just look better and better. I think their side laning against Gen G was really hard for that team to deal with. And uh, yeah, if I look at back to the first couple of play-ins games, it's a very steep line. I, I feel like there's a, there's, a lot, my board. there's a lot to work yeah. through here. RNG uh, number one. No, number, number four. Number four seed equals, equals number, number one number team. One. Me happy, because my crystal balls are correct. <laughs> okay. All of this is perfect. to expectation. <laughs> <laughs> Are your crystal balls still perfect? Like no, but like in terms of the track that I'm on with having Gala for everything, he it's going pretty well. lied to a lot of people yeah. on live television. Yeah, All right, I, big surprise out of Group D. What do we think here? Well, I already you know, know, you know, I, you know, know, you know, know what's going on. You don't even need to write it down. Just, know, just explain why you're surprised that Genji's not in first. <laughs> I was going to do a really nice, sad smiley face, Dash, but I, I guess the artistry will be lost. <laughs> just um, take a close-up on his face. There's well, your sad smiley face. The first half of the draft for Genji was great, and mm -hmm. I was very excited when I saw the Senna singed, and then it was a complete disaster. Uh, and, and the biggest surprise for me was specifically that uh, the combination of Vizier and Poppy has been incredibly successful domestically for Gen.G. As, um, just hold it. Oh, no, nice! <laughs> <laughs> That's so perfect. Has been incredibly, incredibly <laughs> successful for Gen G. So seeing them lose against the playing team wasn't my favorite part of the day. Thank you for <laughs> the brother, assistance, I Dagda. I really appreciate it. So you're right there with them, Dagda. Yeah. Yeah. It just take two. Exactly what he said. I think the the Senna on the bot side with the Singe was really really confusing, and I wasn't a fan of it. But I'm glad we got the win over it. All right, fair enough. On I'm the learning. Other, I'm learning what the whiteboard. What are is for. going it's on over context. here? Okay. <laughs> Biggest right. surprise: Hunter Thieves less than Oyster, and that means Hunter Thieves bad. Oh. Oyster good. Is that what less than means? Yeah. Worse than. I mean, it could bad. less losses, less <laughs> wins. I had to be. Oh, that's specific. a good point. That's yeah. a good point. Okay, so 100 Thieves, you had the expectation that they would. I uh, mean, I didn't think they would make it out of the group. I was expecting this to be like a one to three win group for them, which you still can be, but I definitely sure. expected them to win their debut game because they've been to Worlds before. They're an experienced roster. I didn't expect them to have any type of nerves or like lackadaisical play, but it looked to me like they were playing very slow against Oysters, and they just kind of let Oysters scale up and win team fights, which I was very disappointed in. All right, fair enough. Well, that's just a recap of what we've seen over two days of group stage play. We've got plenty more to go, starting with today. Day number three, let's see what we got on the schedule. It's Gam Esports up against Rogue to kick things off, and we'll follow that with Hunt Thieves versus Gen G. Edward Gaming versus Fnatic in game three of the day. Cloud9 and T1 take to the stage just after that. We'll close things out with Royal Never Give Up versus Flying Oyster, and DRX versus Top Esports.
Uh, I mean, every single day, uh, every single game so far has felt like it's delivered, but of the six games today, is there anything, in, any one in particular that you really have your sights set on as we're starting to get to a point where the groups are going to solidify, the standings are going to solidify? I know this is not going to be a popular statement, um, but I'm looking forward to the 105th Gen G game. We need to win. <laughs> we need to win. So do we. We, have, I we, know also you, we need, need to win. more, Dash. We're not used to this. Everybody needs a win. <laughs> 100 Thieves <laughs> definitely needs a win. Let's this is hear a dark day. Yeah. I know. This is a dark day. What happened? What's happening, Dad? This is what I don't know. Great man. Time. <laughs> hey, I want you guys to know that you were in total control. I had zero control of, yeah. of how this went. It was all up to you guys yeah. and your whiteboards. Let's get a word from Closer, his thoughts on what's broken down in the group stage so far. Hey, I'm Closer. Trying for 400 Thieves. I think mainly we lost because of our mistakes and I think they definitely played well but we kind of gave them the fights that they want. We were nervous as well, it's because first game uh, is obviously not an excuse but we can learn from this. We have a tough schedule coming up with Genji and RNG but we can beat anyone. Genji is definitely looking like the best team in the world right now. They have very very strong laners so it's gonna be hard to play against them as a jungler. I think Chovy is a very, very good player and he's playing with Peanuts. I think Peanuts is also a good player. It's gonna be a fun one. We definitely have an underdog mentality and we should play at our best because no one expects anything from us anyway. Our second game, we'll see Closer and all of 100 Thieves face off against Gen G in our featured matchup presented by Mercedes Benz. A game that could very well be determined by two monsters in the jungle. Dude, Peanut has actually been so cracked this year. And it's also in such a, I guess, advanced stage of his career. He's been playing professionally for so long, bounced between LCK, LPL, different top teams, but really finding his groove in so many ways this year. And what's really cool about Pina is that last year when he was on Nongshim, he was really credited for how much of an overperformance that team showed throughout the entirety of the year. A lot of players and a lot of the people around him, um, and even people that weren't in his own team, really highlighted how important he was. And everything worked from terms of his early jungle pathing. He took way more risks than a lot of other LCK junglers, and I think that's why Gen G was so far ahead uh, in summer. Yeah, I love seeing him flashing on the poppy over the dragon wall, yeah. going for this really cool, like his pathing has been so unique. And it's really cool to see that people are being that innovative in a scenario where you feel like jungle pathing can kind of be a bit stale. It's going to be very difficult uh, for Closer to overcome a player like Peanut. But mm -hmm. Jad, I really do feel like it has to start with Closer when we talk about 100 Thieves success. He's so often the rock of that team. Yeah, and I hope he can get some gang spot lane because I think when Huhi and FBI are unlocked, 100 Thieves can have a better chance of winning. And I like the thing that he said at the very end of, of that sot there where he says, like, one, we can beat every, anyone, but also no one expects us to win. For me, watching 100 Thieves the whole year, whenever people said they were bad or that they're not top two was exactly when they'd start to pop off. So I'm hoping that they've been able to channel that energy of, you know, everyone saying that NA can't win a game and prove them wrong. And I hope him. Name a better duo. All right, from one player to another, let's get a word from Comp on their success here at Worlds so far and their upcoming opponent in GAM Esports. Hello, guys. I'm Rog Zedicare, Comp. New York has been great. We've been here almost for a week. And for sure, starting my first Worlds ever group stage with a W is always the best start I can ask for. It for sure is sweeter winning against DRX since they were the team that was undefeated during planes. I think overall the difference maker was for sure the draft. I would say in the end we also executed very well, but I think draft was on our advantage for sure from the start to the finish, so well played to my coach. For sure there should be like interesting picks from both sides, right? But in the end I think it will most likely come to fighting around objectives and I think we have kind of mastered it uh, in a pretty good level since especially in LC finals week, so yeah, it's as I said before, right? Let's just go and team fight and see who wins. So about the EU fans, I hope for today, especially, you are really happy about the 3 0 from each one of uh, our teams, and I hope in the end one of our teams ends up taking it home. Jad, I see you writing on the whiteboard, but I am going to go to you first because earlier yep. on your whiteboard, you had said comp number one. Yep. I mean, I actually don't know why I'm doing this, but this was the composition that they were running because he said he said they had a really good draft. So I'm just like, oh, yeah, by the way, I wanted to show people Absolutely. what they were doing, and I have a tool. Uh, but basically, <laughs> Comp 
took the momentum that he had throughout the LEC playoffs, but then also was able to show up on the world stage. They so hard punished this misfortune pick. Anytime they get a little bit ahead of the misfortune, if misfortune ever eye contact Lucian, she dies. Mm -hmm. And they were able to make that map pressure translates so well through the rest of the map. So they won bottom lane with Lucian Nami, which is a very execution heavy combo. And then in team fights, you need to play on such good limits. I didn't feel like Comp made any mistakes that entire game. And the confidence he showed means Rogue like actually believes they can win every game in this group. I mean, so we'll see if they can maintain that kind of a hot streak in their performance. And Dagda, I think that will do wonders in terms of servicing this team and a lot of the questions that people had about the, the team overall coming in. Yeah, I think Rogue have been absolutely fantastic. And I think this performance has kind of silenced a lot of the doubts around them. And I'll be the first one to put up my hands. I doubted them coming into this. I was like, look, the meta's probably shifting over towards carry junglers. We're not going to see Rogue be able to have that same similar success that they saw domestically, but they put up and shut up everyone else because they brought this composition where Comp and Trimby could play hard to the bot side. We got Malrang taking this aggressive jungler in as well, so he could have that big impact that we expect from the early stages. Even the fact that they were able to flex the Maokai too, this is showing that Rogue can take their style and still play it on the international stage. And I think the fact that they're willing to bring these out and look as fantastic as they did against DRX gives me very big hopes that this team is going to make it into playoffs. So while Rogue looked dominant, let's talk about how this set of five players and roster we expect to match up against GAM Esports. And that to me is one of the most exciting parts because I want to give a shout out to both Odo and uh, and Malrong. Malrong to me, it's, I'm always happy to see how SK players do well. Of I think course. that he had a, a very um, kind of in line with the rest of Rogue, uh, often kind of put down for he can only play one kind of style, which in the end still won the LEC. So shout out to Malrong. <laughs> um, but the fact that they were able to actually put such a big dent in uh, Juhan and King, to me, was kind of a surprise. I didn't expect them to be that strong. And I actually expect Gum's top side to have a lot more pushback. I think Kiaya and Levi both are incredibly strong. And I'm really hoping that they can showcase a little bit more when they're not up uh, against the uh, second seat of the LBL. Feels natural to start uh, in the jungle matchup uh, when you're taking a look at a team that's got Levi on the roster. So often, the person who has to generate the plays. Yeah, I think this is the big one for me. Levi, at least when he was playing back on 100 Thieves Academy, was much more kind of the Sejuani, these more tank-orientated junglers. But now that he's moved back over to the VCS, he's playing much more carry oriented It's very flexible champion pool, like Nocturnes and Kha'Zixes and all these different things. So I expect him to be quite flexible when it comes to actually what he wants to play in the Rift. And I think that works well against Malrang, because even as we saw yesterday, Rogue willing to chop and change and be flexible in the draft, you have to try and match that. And a huge amount of this is going to be coming to Levi to try and control Malrang in the early stages and make sure he's not garnering those leads that Rogue love to play for. Dash, you know that saying, don't judge a book by its cover? Yeah. Yeah, I hate that saying. Yeah, so I actually think it's inaccurate because there's yeah. a huge reason to judge a book by its cover. Right. And if you look Why at the cover... Why does it have a cover if I'm not supposed to judge it exactly. by the cover? Absolutely. And the cover for these two teams is game one of groups, right? So in game one, the cover for Rogue is like, damn, these guys are good. And the one for, for Gam is like, whoa, they kind of fed a lot. Oh, okay. But sometimes you do have to open the book and read it as well. All right. So Fine. in this case, reserve your entire judgment until you read the whole book, because I do think there is more to GAM than what they showed yesterday. I'm not there a is reader. Is there a podcast version? Yeah, Audio maybe. book version, maybe? There's a video version. Actually, oh, watch it right that. here, where <laughs> they really entered this fight against Top. They jumped in, didn't land the engage, gave a double kill over to Jackie Love's Sivir Yumi, and this was so early into a game, but a four for zero fight, especially against that comp, is unrecoverable. So right. basically anything after that point in the game, I don't think any team had a realistic chance of winning. So I don't think that level of catastrophe will happen to them today, and they can still have a very competitive showing in this And match. I think they've learned from yesterday as well, right? Like what we've seen from the tradition is, hey, we want to play for team fights, we want to play for late games. They're not the type to try and go, hey, we'll catch top esports off guard and that was a lot of what they were trying to do there you're coming back from rift out see if they can catch them i think they will just go back to hey we're just going to play standard we're going to play to our strengths rather than trying to do something a little bit funky against some of the the better teams in the tournament i think it's a really good point uh, not to read into the game too much right yeah. it can be very easy especially over long days and groups and when they are separated out into four different groups we look at the standings and we go ah oh, Oh, disaster for the VCS, like they're doomed. No, uh, it was an eight minute game, essentially, yeah, by that standard, right? And so yeah. uh, I would love to 
see them come out with some fire and some fight against Rogue today, but I think that that's going to be interesting considering everything you just talked about uh, around the way that Rogue has ap approached the game and some of these aggressive picks they've brought out. I really hope that, as uh, Jed already said, we're getting a better view of what these two teams actually can, uh, can bring to the stage. Mm -hmm. All right, well, there you have it. That's the bird's eye view of day three. The teams are ready. It's GAM Esports and Rogue. Let's dive into day three of World's Group Stage. Starting my first World Group stage with a W is always the best start I can ask for. If you are not confident, teams and players are gonna basically take over you. Đối thủ lót sắp tới thì mình đánh giá là cũng đánh khá là hổ báo và cũng đi lên cũng rất là tốt. I'm confident in myself and I'm confident in my team itself. We can beat them. Mình nghĩ xạ thủ con cũng lót có kỹ năng khá là tốt. If they want to do this playstyle, we're happy to match, then let's just go and impact and see who it's. Có điều phải dè chừng khi mà khi đối đầu với lại game. I think you win world this year, baby. To the CFO, the two players, the players, is that they have a rest. Is for me, I think, is more memorable. So I will be against him. I will be more focused on him. It should be his movement and the way he plays. I think it should be his confidence to face him. I hope they will bring us together to bring us a wonderful game. Don't be too small to see us. We may be defeated. First, I learned a lot of things about the Gumao Yishu. In the past, I thought I was really good at this year. But I think it's a little bit different in the past year. I think it's a little bit different in the past year. I think it's a little bit different in the past year. I think it's a little bit different in the past year. I think it's a little bit different in the past year. Minyoung-yong,今年ラインジョンを見たことがあるんですけど、ミンチャラは今まで4勝を勝ったので、ここでは1勝を取ったので、今年は2勝を取ったので、今年は2勝を取ったので、今年は2勝を取ったので、今年
fans from everywhere. It's a party! It all really right, is. Let's go! <laughs> C9 fan there battling all the T1 fans around him. Um, stay strong! Stay strong! <laughs> that man's caught behind enemy lines. He's, sur he's surrounded. <laughs> he is indeed. <laughs> Blue Hawk down. We've got to get him out. See what happens there. Of course, this is going to be an interesting game because I think that we've often seen that if teams who find their first loss on the stage usually come back swinging. They try something fresh. We saw it from Genji. Mm. They tried a, a creative singed option without the normal Yumi present on yep. the opposite side. I expect yes. they're going to come back swinging today. I think something similar will happen for game. One best of one can provide a lot of overreactions, right? Or, you know, like expectations on teams coming off their best of one into a day two, right? So Gam really struggled yesterday. Rogue really <laughs> doing really well yesterday. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> wait, wait. But you're... <laughs> those C9 jerseys? Because <laughs> we're going to send all the other teams back from different airports. Okay, I get it. All right, we're into picks and bans now. We've seen a shifting trends over the course. Scaling seems to have been favored, certainly favored by Rogue. A lot of those options taken off the board. Azir, Yumi, Aatrox, all going to hit the bench. Yeah. Maokai, 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 where's it going? Who's going to ban it? Is Ro Rogue will slam Maokai 1-2. Is Gam going to ban it or are they going to yeah. first pick it? The these have become the, the predominant champions here that have started to run the group stages. Uh, Yumi joining as well as one of the super most frequently banned champions. We've already got the Aatrox off. Here comes Caitlyn for bottom lane. Are we going to get the trade uh, for the Maokai? I wonder what AD carries we'll see as well. Kalista is a champ that I'm wondering if Comp will lean towards. We saw the Lucian Nami as well. These are bot lanes with agency and how Gamma are going to deal with it. You know, Style has got a couple of severe games, uh, a couple of Kalista games himself, Barris as well. And I actually did like the look of, you know, these Tristana, uh, Tristana Rel combination or the Rel uh, with the Kaisa combinations as well with those dive and kill oriented bottom lanes. We do get our Maokai though off of the, off of the top side. Off of the top side indeed. What's the last band going to be here for Rogue? Kalista is probably going to their mind. The Azir is taken away. Rogue finding a lot of success with Azir. Fnatic similarly. They're going to take away the Sejuani flex just to deny that from Kiaya and Levi in case they want to flex it. I think it's more so going towards the top side. Is it going to be the first pick? Victor? Oh, wow. In. Denying that from Larson. I mean, he has got three Victor games in summer. He is more known as a control mage player, so they maybe think this is a denial to take him off something that can scale really well and be safe. Similar to the Azir, but there's the Kalista hover already from Rogue. I think they'll be a bit more aggressive in this draft. Ari we saw from Knight yesterday. That could be something that Larson decides to, uh, to run towards. See what the option is going to be for now, and if they do go for Locky and the Kalista. I'll be honest, gentlemen, blind pick Victor on one. Not a great sign for fans who love fast League of Legends, but Rogue looking potentially to balance out with the Kalista. Are they going to follow up with the support option here? Do have the option to save it for later. Could just match mid. Could also go for Jarvan here or something. Malrank special straight into this Victor with Maokai and Sejuani being down. You think of things like Jarvan, Trundle, Poppy uh, as the junglers. There's the Jarvan slam straight into the Victor. Makes a lot of sense. Kalista Jarvan, this is just rogue classic, really. And then answering the Kalista bottom lane, uh, Draven did get nerfed, but Draven's still definitely an option. Varus has been super popular recently as well. I think they have to go something like Varus Tom Kench, don't you think? Or Varus Thresh, something to help this Varus get out of a Jarvan ultra play two immobile carries right now. Yeah, that's the Varus Tom. So now Rogue get counter pick on support. I wonder what they'll go for. They could go for a mini support. We've seen things like Kalista Ash as well. Very risky to go <laughs> the for. Cloud9 special, baby. Yeah, yeah. Ben pulling it out. A bit risky, but it can punish lane. I think Kalista Renata is a no-brainer. I think that they should just instantly lock that in because it just makes sense for the lane phase. Yeah, and you expect Gam to pick up some hard engage later on to, to, to charge into that Renata anyways. <laughs> they just slam down. <laughs> The blind top side here for Odoamne. He's still on tank duty. Was very, very good uh, on the Malachi, of course. And since that's banned, Orn up next. And look, I think for Odo, he's a man who's had been on tank duty across so many years of his career. And finally, at Worlds, tanks are really strong. The Maokai, <laughs> yeah. really strong. Orn, we've seen be very strong, especially when the enemy team has so many scaling components and so many immobile champions. Fantastic form of engage with the Jarvan as well. Kalista ult to follow up. I wonder if GP is a good ban here for Rogue. You're playing Kalista, it can be really annoying. For for Kalista to deal with AoE covered spells around Dragonfire. So Victor, Chaos Storm, Barris ult coming across, a GP ult on top of Kalista. I think despite Kiaya not having that many games on it, it just hurts their team comp a little bit. And they're going for support bans here with the Amumu engage. There's so many good supports for these options. You also can think about some of the shield breaking versus Tom Kench. You know, Pike is good because the ultimate you can execute uh, past the shield. The Rel we've seen extremely uh, well utilized against it. And then we still have the Renata for the double range. Yeah, Renata would be 
the go-to. The thing is with Rogue's drafts right now with this top lane pick on three is they're not counter-picking anything. They've got, they, they, they see what they it, um, picked up already. Mid and support is what they're looking at. There's no real value in saving last pick for a specific pick. You just have to pick up what you think strongest and then gamble pick up there, top and jungle. Orianna, Jarvan, Orn, a lot of Wombo, a lot of team fight, a lot of scaling. And scaling, matching, scaling. Now at this point, really, it feels like the only early game champions right now are the J4 as well as the Kalista. Feels like we're going big, we're going to big team fights we get later in the game. Gam, of course, gonna have to lock in the rest of their composition. I really like this team fight already from Rogue, though. It's so solid. You get the classic Orianna, Jarvan combination with the Shockwave delivery. They can play off their strong pushing bottom side. Camille counter to the Orn, though, does very nicely with the uh, Q conversion to true damage. Definitely does with that Sunder as well. Can kind of fo be a little bit of an engage. Uh, don't really want to focus too much on the Camille going in first, but carry jungler for Levi is what we expect. Graves already being hovered, does well into the Jarvan. It's really hard for the Jarvan to lock down champions like Graves in Italy, and they innately clear faster. So it's going to be a Camille Graves here. A little bit more single target damage oh. focused. Of course it is. Uh, of course. How could we forget Trimby Soraka? That's something that was so pivotal in their finals against G2. And Kalista Soraka is what they played in that game one. It's what Comp got a pentakill on in that game one, where he went for this massive knockup with the Kalista ult on a Soraka. And it puts so much pressure, I feel like, on Kiaya. Because if you cannot get into the back line and kill the Soraka, it is going to be impossible to kill the front line of Rogue as we get into these team fights later and later into the game. I think the top side of Gam has their work cut out for them in this match. And it's just such so aggressive for the bottom side early on too with her Soraka spamming out and uh, Kalista jumping forward here. See if they can get some Malrang early ganks. This is what I associate with this player yep. above all. Jarvan getting out for some early ganks and you gotta think those are gonna go towards the bottom side of the map for Rogue. Yeah, mid bot side has to be the focus. Getting Victor's Flash early helps Yorana a lot, especially when the level six comes through. You can always get that mid push in. Bit of an even matchup, slightly Yorana favored because of the range, but Victor has better early trading with the shield, of course. Uh, but it's all gonna be mid bot side for Rogue. And the question is, is top lane gonna play in isolation? We've often seen these Fiora's and Camille's play in isolation against the tanks and just uh, the tanks and get an innate solo advantage. Uh, and that helps in the side lane. And then for, for Gam, keeping your eyes on Levi. With this Graves, you really wanna be able to create that big CS gap versus the Jarvan. Punish the Jarvan. We're going for a lot of those ganks. See if Levi can get big. I think a late invade would be a bit crazy from Gam, but it could work. Graves, Varus, Tom Kench, really strong level one, could split the map against the Soraka when you put an Orn top side. Could be something that they could think about. Yep, definitely. And, and be able to pin down Malrong, see even where he's starting, even if you can't get off a big summoner spell advantage. And look, the VCS, no strangers to creative strategies. For now, looks like they're just moving out to their separate parts of the map as we get ready for our first game of the day here. Tough loss for his cop yesterday. See if Gam can fire back. So Odoamne is actually in this bot push. I wonder if Rogue are thinking about this late invade from Gam and they're keeping their top laner hidden just in case. I think they definitely are because Soraka also starting with the sweeper here for Trimby. <laughs> Looks like they're trying to get bot brush control. I think they were expecting Gam actually to go bot lane. Three or four man level one ward that brush just so that they could get vision onto Rogue's bot lane. Look for good early trades. Levi's gonna walk into this top side jungle. Looks like he might place a ward down. The thing is, you can do a bit of a bait there and not ward, and then they might think they have to sweep it, but Malrang being there knows it's now warded. Yeah. So nice, though, just to even know if he's starting on red. The Jarvan, as soon as you get the red buff, looking for those ganks. Control ward, though, in inventory from Malrang. Started with the potion, plus the control ward, instead of the refillable, just so he can stay in the fog of war. Early level two for the solo lanes of Rogue after the first wave. Won't be too much to abuse, really, in these matchups. No early invade from Gam either. Looks like Levi will solo start on the red buff. Has the blue smite swapped over to Sweeper when he placed that ward, but they'll have information on Maorang. And Rogue won't have information on Levi. There's, already, there's an early ward there in the river on the top right of your screen from Gam as well. I think that's covering any mid ganks from bot side. If Maorang does, you know, red Raptors grump into mid, that'll spot him out. Marion, of course, notoriously creative in the early game. He is a player, as we've highlighted, pretty much every time we watch him play. He will fall behind. He will give himself up all in the service of the team at oh. the end of his laner. And he's skipping Raptors as well. He's going straight down towards the bottom side of the map, over into the blue camps. See how early he actually wants to get down there. As we expected, a lot of this you know, bottom triangle focused from him. Red, Gromp, blue buff. Try and get that level three. And Levi's smartly not gonna path bot here because he realizes enemy bot lane will have the push. They're playing Kalista Soraka. It's gonna be very hard for me to contest a crab. So just full clear towards top to try to get a crab of his own. Make sure the Graves, like Kobe said, just get ahead in CS as much as possible and then cover the bot plays. His strong, strong side of the map is this top side where the Camille will push the Ornin and wants to hover towards that side. 
No surprise as Rogue continue to push out on the bottom side, building a bit of a temporary CS advantages. Oh. That wave will crash. Would have liked to uh, have the hook shot, but Trimby, Comp, leveraging their range advantage well. Something we can keep track of in that matchup is when, hang on a second, Malrang's EQ'd, so they know it's watered there. Waiting Malrang for the cooldown. is going to wait for the EQ. This could be dangerous. Katy might actually die to this gank. Levi is hovering around, covering the push Four out. Seconds. And it's so hard now. The red buff there, he's flashing out to save Team flash. Malrang. Wait, flashing in the waiting arms, they're gonna burst him down. It's gonna be a quick kill, but Levi now gonna look to respond with his own flash out from Larson. The creep's gonna body block any further follow-up. The struggle of the Graves. He wants to auto the Ori, but he can't get through the creeps. Levi forced away. Oh, Malrang strikes again! First blood for Rogue, getting out there early on the Jarvan, slipping past the ward right into the brush. Couple seconds left on the flag, and he goes right in. If you think back to the LEC semifinals, Razork did the same thing to, to Rogue, but instead he flashed over the wall as Poppy, and Razork then ganked mid lane. I wonder if that's something that they thought they could abuse here on the world stage, EQing over, waiting for the cooldown. Now bot lane, very diveable here. They have the heal. Execution is going to be everything. A bit of a slow coming in. Comp tanking a little bit of damage here. Now the flag, the drag, oh! another one. Comp gets the kill. Oh, and this is brutal. Rogue dominating in the early game. We talked about mid bot side and Rogue's exactly. already off to an early lead. Oh, exactly. Rogue playing off of their power points, off of their draft advantages here. Malrang playing to both lanes that he could play off of, gets both of them ahead. And this kill actually going over to comp two is devastating for the Gigabyte Marines bottom lane. Look at the CS deficit as well, almost double the creep. So we'll see this one again. Malrang almost has his combo off cooldown. Katy flashes, but that's an easy flash EQ from Malrang. Doesn't use the EQ flash because then yeah. he doesn't get the damage to land. And Levi flashes forwards to try to kill Larson, so Larson can match the flash. Malrang has lethal tempo, so watch the attack speed here when it's fully stacked up. <laughs> and now he's oh, looking he's again. Going back, rinse and repeat, baby. Oh, Rogue oh, are boy. not stopping. Trippy is here too. Oh, Soraka wants some KP. She's got to get it. Rogue 3-0 on the board. Oh, I feel so bad for the Gigabyte Marines after yesterday's crushing game as well. Rogue wastes no time. It's only four and a half minutes into the game, fellas. And Rogue are already dominating. And we saw the J4 band yesterday, not because it's a fantastic champion in the context of the meta, but because Malrang is just so damn effective yep. at impacting the early game whenever he gets this character. And you look over at the CS gap, and you expect that gap to, to explode there with the jungle, but it's not going to mean any power advantage because they constantly have lane control for both of them, and Malrang getting experience off the lane minions oh. while he's ganking, plus the actual kills themselves. We've got a quick little intermission here. Yeah, I think it's a gam pause there. I can see the referee talking to Levi. Maybe he got something wrong with his PC or his setup. Not too happy about it. No game bugs, it looks like. So hopefully we can get that resolved quickly. But you were just talking about the CS. The Jarvan a little bit behind in camps. Still has his whole bot side up there, Malrang. But I think, as expected, he will be behind and he'll look for early oh, yeah. objectives after getting his laners ahead. Uh, plus the, the added fact that we didn't have a recall from Levi either yet. He's been trying to, you know, put out all these fires all over the map, going to pick up CS here and there after Malrang has already laid destruction to the laners. Yeah, and it's just such a difficult game now because he has been able to get the Orion ahead. And those scaling matchups normally we don't expect a lot in terms of kill pressure in the 1v1, but as Orion gets further and further ahead, it's going to be harder. And of course, on the bottom side, Callista getting tier two boots early means Boris, <laughs> Boris if he ever walks up to push a wave in, Callista's just going to walk him down. Well, hop him down, really. She's going to hop him <laughs> down. And, and a lot of credit, really, to Trimby, again, for bringing back this Soraka pick. It's so much harassment early on. People always just associate the healing with Soraka, but it's actually a really strong bully lane, too. He's whittling down the Varus, constantly poking him out in lane, pushing them under tower and getting them to that spot where Malrang had a very easy dive. And Soraka Silence is one of the most obnoxious abilities in the game, because if Jarvan ever EQs in, you basically have to preemptively flash, because if he hits you, the Silence is coming down, Tom Kench is eating nobody. As well. it, it fills that Cataclysm so nicely. Yeah. It's very satisfying. <laughs> it does. It just makes it so you're basically stuck in there and cannot flash out. I feel like the Gam draft... They've drafted to deny what, <laughs> what Rogue can do, yeah. but then they've ended up with very few options that Levi can play through, right? You have a Victor mid you have to cover, that's your first pick. Mm -hmm. Your Varus, Tom Kencher, then counter pick bot with a range support, and they're being pushed in. And your Camille's into an orange, so Levi can focus on top side and get things like the Heralds, but he doesn't have many setup lanes pre-6. Yeah, and, and the thing to look for next year for Rogue is to, to keep this aggressive look, because Victor without Flash, guess what? Orianna's about to get six. That is an easy shockwave to land. Malrang can come right back on the Jarvan. Anytime the Victor is out uh, from under the tower, it's so scary for him. So still 50% left on that Flash cooldown for the Victor. Uh, meanwhile, it's going to get even scarier. And we're back in the game, and I think the other big concern is Trimby. Normally, you don't look at Soraka as a champion who can roam a lot, but Callista with this kind of lead, 
pretty much untouchable in lane, especially once the cleanse comes back up. It's only the level six for Varus, where comp is really gonna have to start to be concerned about the kill pressure present. Yeah, the cleanse will help out with that kill pressure, but I'm just noticing on the minimap here, Malrang's actually giving the first blue buff off the game to Larson. <laughs> That's not the second one, we're only five minutes in. He did the full clear, a little bit of a clear towards Bolt, then ganked mid, then ganked mid again after Bolt, and now he's given over the blue, and now he's on Dragon, so this is the kind of utility of the Jarvan. Exactly, Malrang just plays so well for his team, Ev for every laner all the time, spamming ganks, giving over everything that he can. First Dragon as well, um, gonna provide a decent amount of defense after they increase the power of these buffs. Plus you have Soraka here, Trimby immediately picking up that Dark Seal. It's very easy to get stacks with the ultimate across the map as well. And this is as expected. Levi will walk into the enemy jungle. He knows they're on Drake. Bot lane's just moved into Fog of War and they're not ganking mid because of the push. So the second this Dragon dies, he can move up to Krugs. He can look for something towards the top with Ki Kiaia being level six. I don't know if they have the damage to kill Odo Amne, and the red buff is spawning soon. So maybe he wants to hang around here with the crab as well and just get as big of a CS lead as possible. For Levi, I just I feel I feel for him. You know, the lane he's just doing his best. He's got the winning matchup in the context of the jungle, but he's he's just farming. He's just power farming. He's holding on as he can. Gam Esports really struggling to get anything else done for now. Level six is though going to be big. Yeah, and I expect Malrong to keep ping ponging between mid and bottom lane again. The price he had to pay was the Raptors and the Krugs. Knock up Odo Omni now stepping forward. Alti now coming back in. Odo caught out here. Levi on the way back up. Smoke screen going down. Odo Omni flashing out to safety. Should be just fine. No, Levi trying to finish the job. They do take him down. Tax sweep to grab the kill. That's a really big wave that Odo Omni is going to lose. A big play there for Gam. I feel like Odo Omni just kind of getting a little bit overexcited on the trade, looking for a kill despite being on the weak side of the map. And I like that attitude here from Levi. He's like, okay, we have to split the map. I cannot fight on the mid and bottom lanes anymore. Have to go towards top side. He's going to take away all the camps from topside for Rogue. Meanwhile, Maorong is going to do the same down here. So we've got that split jungle map once again. Absolutely something worth highlighting. Of course, the objective on the bottom side already gone. Another Drake in about four minutes. Harold about to spawn in 30 seconds, though. So not a bad time to have control of the top side for GAM Esports. Oh, Levi's going to be really strong on his base. After taking this crab, he saw his top camps respawning. We saw a little bit there. Cathy was using his ult there to clear the mid wave up against Larson. Needs to get a good base off soon. Larson will match that. Three minutes, 30 seconds, next dragon. You just highlighted it. Drake goes to Herald. How does Rogue want to navigate around it? Do they just leave Comp, Bolt, and look for plates and trade off? Or do they send. Trimby's already going up there. Comp as well to contest the 5v5. Yeah, we've got support roam timers coming out. Of course, Graves here always with the Zombie Ward as well. You see Levi there with early lethality. We'll get that Umbral Glaive to help out with the vision control. Pops up one down on that Rift Trail, plus getting the Scuttle Crab. But Maorin goes right over it. The Zombie Ward that was left behind will see. So I think Kati actually stayed for an extra wave. He has TP. Comps on the way up after pushing both. Odo has the top push. And Gam, despite having so much control on this top side, Levi probably has a lot of gold in his pocket, so he needs to take a base. They don't actually have the time to contest this. Yeah, and you see it's for sure the call has already been made from Gam really early on with the movement from Tom Kench as he goes back to the bottom lane. There's no way they want to contest that. Yeah. Very difficult situation to be in. The fact that they've lost the Dragon as well as the Herald. Individually, you can see it pretty decently for the Graves, but only amounting to 200 gold because of the kill participation that Maorang has been able to build for himself, although he is quite far ahead in terms of overall experience. See what game could do to try to find some more of these plays across the map. Again, Varus level 6 just around the corner, but for now, Comp level 7, gaining so much individual solo XP as Trimby has been leaving the lane. Yeah, I think for Rogue, their next play will be to get Cathy's Flash so he's stuck on her tower for the rest of the game and they can look for plays mid. For Gam, it's about just Levi. Wherever Rogue's pressuring, it looks like he wants to go to the opposite side and look to mismatch for Camps. They're to pressure two. Larson here a bit. Backing off, Maorang in the area. Good burst damage, Mal oh! going in, going for the combo ball on top. Can they get it? Oh! One hill back. That's the combo, the ball delivery system. And he flashed as well. So Rogue get everything they wanted and more. The kill and the flash off the mid laner. Now they're looking at Levi. That was beautifully executed by Rogue. The turn from Maorang, the second he landed the knockup, the ults both landed at the same time. And Cathy was on the wrong side of the Cataclysm, get towards his tower, tries to flash away. Now he's lost that flash. They got the kill. Maorang has Herald, and now he's threatening something towards bot side. Oh. The mid 2v2s just spill into the oh. bottom. Oh, it's so hard. You devour just in time. The silence not going to amount to a whole lot, but they get that cooldown out of the ult. Crucially, the ult goes wide. They can maybe try to re-dive here. Maorang debating what the option is. They know Graves is still going to be very far behind in terms of getting to the bottom side. This is a 40 CS lead in bots right now. They've gotten two plates by themselves. Larson has flash. He's in trouble, though. Levi does have flash of his oh, own. Bottom. Moving out. 
can't start to walk down to the rest of his team. Tom catch on the way up, maybe hoping to punish, but Maorang in the area. Got to stop anything else from happening, and they're grabbing bottom tower at the same time. Massive lead for Rogue. Yeah, this is the thing. It's too hard for the Marines because Rogue have complete control of two lanes right now, so you can just even spill down to the bottom lane. They're going to get the second charge off from the Rift Herald as well. Big chunk of damage into that one, and this is such a big early lead. Yeah, Gam Esports. Struggling a little bit now. It's almost a 3k gold deficit. They're gonna look for what I play on the top side. Levi's hovering around. I don't know if they can dive Odo here. No CC on the Graves. He's just gonna run out. Maybe they can get a plate if the Camille has demolished. We'll take away another camp. And Marang still down on creeps, but quite close in levels. And not so far behind in gold now. He's actually picked up a serrated Dirk. <laughs> Even though he was building full tank, he's gotten himself an extra kill. He thought, you know what? I'll get a little bit Let's more damage. Have a little in his yeah. This is this is the picture of indecisiveness. You're like, do I want to do damage? Do I want to support the team? The I Bami think, Cinder plus serrated. I think combo. Th this is the picture of hubris. You know, I'm having fun. <laughs> Let's get a little exciting with it. Some more burst damage there. Next uh, EQ plus shockwave combo is gonna hurt. The map state is a real pain for Gam right now because Rogue's actually starting the dragon while pushing top with their bot lane. So I feel like Rogue maybe blundered a bit here. Gam Whoa, hang on a second. Hold that thought. That's a lethal tempo. Jarvan with the serrated Dirk, baby. You're going to have to flash out of there. Malrank flashing to safety as well. Oh, they're all coming. Look at the bottom lane as well. Kalista Soraka rotating through mid lane right now. They're going to try and catch him. 2 Flash out to safety. Odo Wamnane already to stop any further follow up. They're going to get knocked up as well. They're trying to burn through the time catch as quickly as they can, but the dragon has already dropped in favor of the Marines. Should yeah, be soloing out style. That's the battle, Soraka. That man has had enough potassium. He does not want any more bananas, trust me. That is big. That is big for Gam, though, to be able to get the dragon without losing anyone in such a losing yep. state of the map. It was it was really awkward by Rogue there because they put their bot lane top, initially pushed out the wave looking for lates, but then Malrang started dragon, so then they were forced to move down to a fight that didn't exist. Yes, they got a couple of summoners out of the Gam bot lane, but they could have made a decision there to drop the dragon, look for plates, or committed to the dragon early. So good pick up there by Gam will slow down this dragon stacking by Rogue. Yeah, I think it was a really good job by Gam recognizing the lane allocations there and just knowing you have that timing window, they get it down. Yep. And of course, when we look ahead, summoner spells for the bot lane do matter. We're going to have to keep an eye on how the Mars and the Tom Catcher are able to survive the next few minutes as they are moving them up to the top side of the map, because that could be the thing that shifts that play overall back into the favor of Rogue. Pressure to collapse on it. And interestingly, Serrated Dirk going for the more conservative team-based lethality option in the Umbral Glaive, which yeah, I respect. I, I love it because it's such a good snowballing item to be able to black out the map, take away all the vision of your opponents when you're winning like this, and, and the gank threat of Jarvan to be able to constantly know that there's no vision there, sweeping it out. So Rogue's bot lane up towards his top side. Gam's gonna match it. Larson and Malrang trying to hover towards here. Cathy will have his flash up soon. 0 3 0 right now on this Victor. Has been struggling against the Rogue mid jungle, but with this flash coming back up, he can start to contest these mid waves, and maybe they can find a window to start taking out some of this vision that Rogue are clearing out. That one ward helping to catch the rotations. Yeah, they're just trying to bully them right now. Rogue doing such a good job. You know, look at the item differences. There's Callista with the full shield bow done. The Mythics are already coming in. We also have the Ludens proc from Larson here. So if you, and this is, this is flash available for Victor. So he's got to flash the EQ. If you get hit by that, plus the shockwave, you're just dead. Herald spawning very, very soon. And I think Rogue will try to secure that, then look for the mid tower. Malrang and Trimby lying in wait. Don't know if they have the damage to fight this, though. Despite having that Umbral Glaive, I don't think they have the burst to force Gam out there. They could look for a turn with Katya coming across from mid lane. Comp just keeping this top push. Larson keeping this mid push. Kiaya does have bot push, but no TP, so he needs to be very quick to react if they want to contest his Herald. Yeah, so difficult for the Camille to get involved now. And I think so much pressure again on the style is like the one really reliable form of hard engage without Camille in the area. Can't afford to miss another alt in the fight to come. Gam really backing off here, though. They know they cannot push into the darkness of the map, partially courtesy due to the Umbral Blade. And I think they should just completely forfeit it, not try and fight it at all. Odo Omni actually has teleport advantage, and it's unleashed teleport time. We're past the 14 minutes here, so uh, Gam should probably concede this. Camille's not going to be able to get up there in time, plus they're at such an item disadvantage. Uh, just try and lick your wounds, collect the CS at your towers, don't try and lose anything else. Yeah, I think you're right there, Kobe. And the problem that Gam have is cross-mapping against Rogue right now, against an Orn. It's going to take a long time to dive him with Graves and Camille because of his build. So much armor, a lot of health items, quite tanky with the ult can clear out the wave. So Kiaia is just going to move towards mid instead, and Gam don't really get anything for it. But they do need to defend the Herald play, and the Herald play is probably going to go mid unless they look for a tier two here, Rogue. 
Sweeping out a little bit of vision. I expect Comp to take a base soon and then reset. Come out on the map for 1 minute 30 seconds on this Dragon. Gam can get a little bit of bot, uh, bot vision before that spawns. Take away some camps too. Dragon scaling. Obviously always something that Gam could look to play for as we are one Drake apiece the stage of the game. Still a long way off any soul points, but Hextech good for both of these lineups. Yeah, I think it's it's so difficult for them. Uh, in this sort of scenario for Gam, I think you try and send Camille with some backup to get a pick on somebody. Otherwise, Rogue constantly have the early move. And you see Mauron come over, drop the Rift Field in mid, just finish that up. You Tom, take away those defenses. Oh, now the Tom Kench on the run has already used the Devour style, forced to back away. Oda Wamne, though, wants to keep the fight going. He knows he can tank this tower forever. Here comes Maorang as well. They're looking to get everything that they possibly can. Style getting cut down. Tower next in the sights of Rogue. Kiai looking for the cross map on the bot tier one, but Rogue just took mid tower, ran towards top. Trimby and Maorang on the way to help out Com. Didn't even have to use a Soraka ult there. In a 1v2, Com felt really confident to take that fight. Style saves his flash. He knew he was going to die regardless. There's a Jarvan over the wall, and that's all three outers down. Rogue off to a big early game lead, 30 seconds on the Dragon spawn. I think they're going to base and run out towards the bot side. It's Malrong's Rift. Uh, he's actually just controlling this entire game so effortlessly. 16 and a half minutes here. Rogue constantly taking away every last little bit of defense that Gam can even try and hide behind to collect CS. Now that all the outer towers are down, you'll see Rogue move in, get the deeper vision, try and pick people off uh, between those rotations. Here's another look at it. Comp himself just so far ahead, forcing out the Tom Kench ultimate early, and you've already got the rest of the rev members of Rogue moving over. Yeah, it doesn't really stand a chance. There's no point for Katy to TP in here because Levi's on the opposite side of the map, but we're back into the on-screen live action. Malrang. Levi fighting Malrang. Going in. He's the tempo looking to get sacked, but Malrang right. overstaying as welcome just a little bit there. There's the stopwatch. Not sure how many ways he's going to be able to get out of this. Still going in, flashing out to safety. Absolute madman gets out. Great use of the ult there. He actually ulted to become unstoppable to avoid the Tom Kench knockup and then decided to flash out. So. They have to use you the uh, Serac ult as well. We'll see if Gam want to fight this with two rogue ultimates being down. Odos isn't up yet either, but Levi being low is going to go towards yeah. his red buff. I think they're just going to have to call this one and give it as well. Well played. Ultimately, Maorang making the best out of a bad situation, getting a lot of resources from the opposition. Now two drakes to the side of Rogue on top of that almost 4k gold lead that they have built for themselves. And gentlemen, I think that this is such a hard game to play out now when Comp is this far ahead, when he's got cleanse for the Var Assault, and it feels like the later we go, we know the Camille will eventually be a threat, but it feels like Gam need that threat now. They need something that they can play around because they're just slowly losing across the map. And that's why I think you cannot match at all Rogue, so you have to overload one side. Pick one side, send multiple people, Camille ultimate somebody, try and hunt down maybe a bounty or something somewhere. If you go after Comp, there's a bigger bounty on his head, maybe Camille ulti with a couple extra carries there, try and get a burst. This side has not been overloaded by Gam. Instead, Rogue committing multiple members here. Camille, though, very strong still. Odo still stepping forward, looking to get that empowered auto. Camille building towards a frozen hot second. We'll have to check what he does with that item there. Uh, but what I will say for Rogue is a lot of pressure on the carries. Malrang has done his job. He's gotten, he's passed the baton over. He's gotten you through <laughs> yeah. the early game. He is not going to be any much stronger. He's just going to build more health uh, on this tank Jarvan, and that's about it. He can't really impact the lanes. It's on Larson and Comp now to take the game home. Larson down in CS a little bit. Look at Levi's. Almost 50. CS up in the jungle right now, and they have some pressure on this top side because Malrang showed bots. Comps on his way. I wonder if they can get this tower. Larson has enough threat to push them off. Zoning them away as Comp comes up to the top lane as well. They can see the Sentinel coming. What the next play is going to be? All the outers are down. It's a little bit hard right now for Rogue to push their advantage any further. They're doing a good job, though, in getting the early push on one wave. You see this down. Camille gets shoved under tower. Then they rotate everybody else up to the other two lanes. So they don't allow any sort of recourse here uh, for, for, for Gom in trying to push out on any side, even try and look at these objectives. But those towers, those side towers are so low. Maybe as we move forward and the objective bounties pop up, They'll be able to overextend and grab something to and get back into it. I think that's going to be a rinse and repeat. Kiai, uh -oh. no flash from the earlier gank. Odo hiding the bush. Your way. Hookshot is going to be everything here. If he can get the buffer, maybe he can make his way out. Malrang waiting patiently, though. Looking to lock him down, taking his time, just walking up, fishing for the autos. Levi in the area, though, could be big. Nice oh. dodge comes through here. They can try to turn this into 2v2. Levi, so much money in his back pocket. No flash left for Malrang. The ulti will not be enough. Beautiful turn from Gam. Second time where Kiaya could probably even win that in a 1v2. This armor is helping out against this lethality slash tank Jarvan. And in this 2v1, Rogue looked for the second time, and it backfires. Kiaya now can look for this bot tier 1. Yeah, Gam got one of the picks that they are looking for here. Let's see if 
they can actually make more of it. Kaya, great timing there on his ultimate, dodging the EQ there from Malrong, keeping him around long enough for Levi to get there. Rogue still very happy with the lead that they have, very secure, but those are the types of plays here. The outplays for Gam. And I feel like you you hit the nail on the head there, Kobe, where you're saying moving from bot to mid and mid to top and just controlling the map, stacking Drake's playing for Baron, but feels a bit unnecessary from Rogue. They don't really have the damage to kill this Camille, even despite this knock-up landing, uses the ult to dodge it. He could E away here, worst case, and there goes all of your ultimates from your top jungle and your forms of engage. But Levi shows up, shut down over to Kiaya, and he's only gonna get stronger as he looks for this bot power. Graves now with the Gore Drinker as well. Kiaya, such a difficult uh, player to threaten, really, at this stage of the game. The Camille so individually strong. Ultimate already almost up and available again. Still hasn't even completed a second item and seems so confident even in the 1v2. And I like that little play right there because it doesn't look like much, but that is some restraint, you know? Rogue are like, ha, ah, maybe he will get baited in by this tower. One more Q from Camille would take it down. But yeah, it doesn't overextend, doesn't give them the opportunity to pick him off. He backs off, shows some restraint. They're not getting too greedy. So he has gone for that frozen heart second. Does give you know, a lot of ability haste next to the Lucidity Boots as well. Doesn't have things like the Hydra to push out sides fast, um, but it will help him in terms of staying alive when he does deal with that 1v2 and getting on top of comp, it could help out a little bit. But for now, it looks like Rogue have decided to stop going towards bot, stack these Drakes, 50 seconds on the spawn, and look for 5v5 teamfights, because look at how ahead comp is, but he's not really been able to impact the map. Levi moving up to the top side. Crucial to note that Larson does not have teleport. So if Rogue do want to contest this, there is a TP advantage to the side of Gam at this moment. Three members looking to collapse. Tower should just be dead as soon as the next wave comes in, but it's a little bit of a ways off. Yeah, with the 30 seconds left towards this dragon, looks like the commitment from Gam is like, once again, okay, we don't want to fight a full fight. Let's go get something on the other side of the map. We'll get the last remnants of this tower. Rogue, especially with those hex gates, Gonna make the transition over. They're actually clearing out all the vision around Baron during this little window, too. And just, just look at the levels. Katy, despite going 0 3 0, has a shutdown and he's up a level on Larson right now, so he's definitely recovered. Kiaya's up a level on Odo Amne. This Ooh, game has slowed down. And speaking of Kati, they're gonna keep him split pushing on the top side. So they're gonna try and push another wave in on the top side of the map while forfeiting this dragon. Get that victor as much juice as they possibly can. Yeah, they're gonna go for two items on the victor and maybe look for a third on this Varus before they contest this dragon. It will be soul point for Roko. So even in a 5v5, a miracle steal over for Malrang could oh. just, you know, you're gonna have to buff the rest of the game. There's no real Baron threats from Gamma either. I think they have enough vision here, shadow vision on Rogue's side to spot out what they're up to. And once we do transition to the actual team fight, because now it's Dragon Soul Point here for Rogue, so they're just waiting for the clock to tick down. They've got Orn Ultimate to set up the Jarvan EQ Shockwave combination. Definitely looks very scary for Gam to deal with when they actually have to fight the team fight. Certainly does, especially when Graves is so short range. Of course, Tom Kench, the luxury of saving one of the two carries at this point between Style and Cotty. Have to see who he wants to take out, who he can protect in the fights to come. As Odawamne does what he can to keep this tower alive, stepping forward to clear the way before it can even get close. Yeah, the, the point of power for Gam is Ben Kiaya. This Camille split push, he's done it quite well. Shown restraint when necessary, dodged out on the gank. What I will say is a little bit of shadow vision wouldn't hurt too much for Kiaya. Having like a ward or two in the enemy jungle so he knows where Malrain is, so he can actually step up and hit these towers. The only reason he can do it now is because Levi's there. I don't really want a human water to jungle or a pink or anything like that would help a lot so he can keep pressuring Odo Omni and he gets to the point where Camille can't dive the Orn, but what she can do is she can ignore the Orn and then just hit the tower and focus it down. Yeah. If Odo Omni steps past the wave, of course he'll try to dash on him, but when the wave crashes, the ideal situation is just to ignore him. If he knows the rest of Rogue or topside, he can look to chunk towers. Rogue now collapsing on the top side, trying to spend as much control as they can over this area. Baron, the only really big objective on the map. You have the Callista plus the Jarvan, so relatively easy control when it comes to smiting or 50-50ing, but Rogue's clear on this objective would be pretty slow at this stage of the game. They also, yeah, have Soraka sustain too. So it feels like Rogue could look for some baits here. You have really good turn from Rogue. If you start up on Baron, you control all that vision. And then whenever Gam come over, you look with the Orn ultimate, you look with all this engage that you have to try and turn off, see if you can get a pick. If you can't, it's okay because Soraka sustain should keep your tank healthy as well. Game has slowed down a little bit. I saw Rogue look for those pick towards bots. Gam turned the play around, but now it could speed up a bit. Three minutes on the next soul point. Larson actually looking for Via here. He's gonna have to flash over the wall. 
Rogue bowling their way into the Gamp jungle. Bit of poke coming in from Varus, not bad to have, certainly as we close to the fight. It's important to note that Kiaia has picked up the Tiamat, so pushing on the side wave, going to be much faster, not as easy for Rogue to take this objective uncontested. And look at this controlled, controlled destruction here. Gam, after getting behind so much early on versus Rogue, trying to stabilize the game a bit. Here's the bait we're talking about. Here's the, the, the start from Rogue. They have very good turn. There's a TP. Kiaia is on the way. In. Rogue, disciplined as they back off. Baron now resetting. So far, purely positive play for them. They're going to look to pull the trigger. They look to start the fight. If they can burn down the Tom Catch, you won't be able to save anybody. But it's a slow fight. It's controlled from the side of Gam. Odoane taking a decent chunk of damage, but Trimby keeping him topped up. Yeah, I think Odo is just calling for BA there because he has no flash. Maybe he thought he could pick up the first kill of the fight, but the positioning of Gam was threatening the carries of Rogue too much to the point where they could not step up. But I think Rogue got what they came for, and it's the Camille TP. Exactly. That cooldown so big. The split push Camille was the main thing Gam were leveraging in this game to stabilize it. Taking out that ability to join with the rest of them. Rogue can now rinse and repeat. Get a bit awkward for Gam. So what they're doing actually is they're going to put Katy towards the bot side and Kiaia up top. Now, can look for kill pressure onto Larson, but with the stopwatch and with so much vision focus on this top side from the bot lane of Rogue, he'll never really be able to look for those all-ins. The benefit, of course, is the Victor has TP. So Odo will be under a little bit less pressure. Doesn't have that much magic assist, but he's building towards it now. Yeah, the, the benefit is Victor has TP. The uh, downside is that, as you mentioned, they don't have any vision. And Victor has a lot more difficult time getting away from 2v1s on bottom side than the Camille does. So, Kati playing very safe there. Yeah, just trying to laser the wave back right off. It's sort of mirrored, ultimately, because Larson has to give Camille that same respect. Both mid laners backing away from the uh, respective opposing top laners as, for now, just a bit of vision control traded back and forth. We'll see when the next attempt is on the Baron. Of course, it is a minute till Hextech Drake. It will be soul for Rogue if they are able to take it. This is going to be the arena that Gam are forced to fight in. And Gam actually hitting some of their power spikes here with Victor getting to level 16. Another rank in the ultimate here. Kati can definitely uh, add a huge chunk of damage. So just taking stock of the game, Rogue got a really big early game lead. All three outer towers. The game slowed down to the point around 50 minutes later where the gold doesn't matter that much. I think the carries are strong and Gamma gonna fight back. Now going in, backing away. Comfort using the ultimate, of course, keeps the rocks safe. Trimby going right back out, but here comes Maorang off to the side, fishing, looking for an opportunity, hitting one with the Shockwave now. The Var is taking so much damage, but here comes Bay trying to maybe look for the Devourer. He isn't forced to do it yet. Big healing coming from the Soraka, but Maorang in the midst of everyone, and a beautiful Hextech ultimatum to say, not today, buddy. And the timing that Gam go for this play right before the Dragon is going to spawn. They pick off the enemy jungler. Gam have been so good with their decision making here not giving over anything while they're so far behind choosing their timing to finally go for the fight and after that evade they put a stop to the first attempt at dragon soul for rogue before it even starts they, wow they've bought themselves so much time here and kiaya so much confidence just dashes over looks for trimby Callista ult has to be used so early on odo gets the knockout but he's already back over the wall this is where it looks good for rogue because both the carries are in the cataclysm the silence comes down after the shockwave pull but they can't actually get the kill on to style he stays alive and comp can't fight Cathy either he's down two levels and when he dashes forwards he just gets out range and this is where malran gets caught off and I gotta call it the Victor Gravity Field there. The zone control to that ability, stopping everyone from following up on the initial combo. Style even whiffing the flash in the context of the fight, it does not matter. Even without the Tom Kench Devour, they could not finish off the Varus. And they had the little breakpoint. At that replay, Larson was level 15. Kati has the rank three Victor ultimate. He's doing so much damage to the front line there, pushing him out, but Rogue's gonna reset, push out on top. So Soraka got the red buff, and a lot of people will be running, why is that? Now, the red buff gives a lot of base health regeneration, so I wonder if it's because she's gonna sacrifice her health to heal, so this kill keeps the Soraka healthier for when they force this Baron in the next minute. Does hurt comp's damage a little bit, but he's sitting on three items, and I suppose he's the one that made the call to allow that to happen. No flashes on the carries of Gam, so that's why Rogue wanna force. This is why the red buff's on the Soraka, to keep her healthy. Yeah, I like it. They, tur they turn the health battery of Soraka into a rechargeable battery. <laughs> Here come Gam, though. Yeah. How much time do they have? Observer's teasing us. 4K getting lower. We buy over the wall. Oh, Maybe 3K 50, getting lower. The spear. Oh, they're going to get it. Oh, damn. They find it. Oh, one right now. Looking to turn the fight. But here comes the victor. And they're all trapped. They're all caught in the mix of an absolute slaughter. This victor is killing everybody. Huge.
huge steal from Levi, saves the game there. It's a two for two. It was such a bloody fight in that pit. Victor, Chaos Storm, Navaris, and the Callista were free hitting. The Shockwave hit multiple members, but it's Levi that steals the Baron. Incredible smoke screen over the wall as he dashes over to make sure Malran couldn't actually see the health bar. Wow, Gam get over. The controller's in the pit. Levi jumps in. You see the smite, he lands. Then the big counter. Or an ultimate comes through. They do get the knockoff, but it's only on to Tom Kench. And once Kati gets there. Stopwatch is really saving Rogue there. Larson and Comp popping them inside of Varasol. And this is where Odoame tries his best to fight back. Comp flashes over, Malrang flashes over, Rogue escape. Three members alive on both sides, but Gam have the Baron buff. Yeah, the, both of Gam carries there untouched as they move in and try and push them out of the back of this Baron pit. Wow, Gam actually putting on a clinic here of how to come oh. back in a game where you are so far behind early. And this is the power of the, I'll, I'll say, Quadra to threat combo. You know, four of the, the damage dealers of Gam, the top jungle mid AD, will dish out so much if they have uptime. Whereas on Rogue, it's just on Larson and Comp. They're the only people who can get these health bars down. Rogue have a top jungle support for setup and sustain. And this is so big because across this group stage thus far, we've seen so many teams who just have better tools when it comes to late game fighting. And it just makes so much of the execution irrelevant as we get later and later. But Gam have the tools to fight back to respond to what Rogue want to do. Rogue, yeah, some of the execution is easier with the Orn, but we've seen how incredibly powerful the victor can be if Rogue ever misstep. So much credit to Kiaya for bridging the mid game gap here for Gam to get them into this position. And especially in that last play though, Levi nailing the smite getting the steal for them. Here we go with Baron Buff, though. Trying to push for maybe a little bit more. Important to note, so many stopwatches now coming in from the side of Gam. Rogue has spent most of theirs. The GA to help keep comp healthy in the fight to come. I wonder if this is a situation where Rogue say, you know what, we're not going to fight this dragon. We fought you the first time around. You had no flashes. That's why we forced Baron. But then we lost our summoners and Larson comp. No flashes against this threat of the Camille. Just deciding maybe, let's just give this, wait for our summoners to come back up and buy some more time for Orin items. Maybe things like the Rabidons or the Zonias could come through for more defensive items for Rogue. Yep, definitely agree. As uh, Oduamne upgrades the Orianna as well, the carries here for Rogue. Getting their upgrades, scaling. They do have the GA as well on comp. Looking for his last item now, trying to fill out. But just such a difficult situation as we get later and later too, especially with the Baron currently empowered inside of Gam. The Camille on the side lane, gonna two shot these towers if Rogue ever misstep. Yeah, I, I think I think Kajol is right with his focus on summoner spells because Varus and Victor, as we said in Champ Select, these are two low mobility carries. So goal number one for Rogue, burn those flashes. They can burn those flashes before the big fight. Oh. Looking for Katy. Rogue have snuck their way in here. TP coming in. We'll chase him down. No a tower either. If they can get this pig strike, there's, there's no way they can get away from Nor. There's just too much CZ. A clean flash trying to turn, trying to get at least one back in response. Rogue pulling everything out to take the victor out of the equation. They kill the victor, they get the flash off the victor, and they get the big bounty off him as well. As well. Decisive maneuver from Rogue. Now Gam are actually pushing up mid lane to try and get a trade here and bully down the tower. That's going to be soul for Rogue. How the hell did they get four members all the way down into this bot side without being spotted. Really good heads up play before the dragon spawn. We thought they would give it up and just buy more time for yeah. themselves, but now they have the soul and they traded it for the tier two. So well done there, Rogue. They surgically remove the split push victor, earn themselves the soul. They're right back on top. They are. Game, of course, getting a tower in the mid lane. Looks to get a tower on the top side, so the gold still going to feel a little bit game favored, but that soul is going to be massive in the fights to come. But Wamne moving up just to make sure that Gam can't get anything else. Two minutes away from the Baron, the next big arena for these teams to fight, but now Rogue have that permanent buff. It's going to make things so much easier. Yeah, I think that's just going to be the quiet before the storm, really, when that Baron spawns in 1 minute 45 seconds. Neither of these teams want to overstep Ooh. or face check into each other's comps. It's really on Kiaia. You talked about him bridging them mid to late game, but he's also such a powerhouse of a late game champ on the Camille. He's got a little bit of MR, a little bit of armor, too. We'll see what he can get done. Maybe he can look for picks of his own onto Larson. Yeah, your job's not done yet. Your watch is still going here. A lot of work to be done. Certainly the case. And the biggest thing, too, is that Rogue got that play in the window that you talked about, the window where their summoner spells weren't available. Now there's an hourglass as well on the side of Larson. Had to wait for that one. Stopwatch consumed in the last fight. We'll have another stasis in the fight to come. This is big. Level 18 as well, just ticking over for the Orianna. Rogue getting so much at what it could have been a difficult time. And they're all blinged out on orange items now as well. <laughs> Moonstone for Trimby's upgraded and everything. <laughs> They're looking fresh, ready to go. Blinked out, yeah. Comp's going towards some magic resist. I think the problem that Comp is having in these fights is the Chaos Storm is just on top of him as he's trying to dash forward. So he's just taking so much damage from the victor before he yeah. can arrive. 
Witsend or something along those lines will help him out with the Rage Blade. And now Rogue posturing towards mid. Odo has the TP. Kati doesn't have flash just yet. Malrang EQ's over. Gam, don't pull the trigger just yet. There are stopwatches on Kati as well as Style here. So even though there's no flash on the Victor, it does have the stopwatch if he gets dove on. Malrang on the side, looking to see if Gam walk into the spot side river. Odo still has that TP. It's probably better for Rogue if he's around before the fight starts because he can then peel, but looks like Rogue aren't going to take the engage, but with 20 seconds on his Baron spawn, he's going to join his team. How does Gam retake vision? They have one, two blue orbs. Yeah, good job pushing. Two lanes here for Rogue. They get the push on bottom. They push out mid lane as well. Rotation over again into the fog of war will be big. They have easy, easy turn off of this Baron as soon as Gom poke their heads out. But the last Baron has to be fresh in their mind. They had total control of the pit. It did not stop Levi from getting in there. Tech Tech ripped as well. So easy for him to find an angle to find a way back into this pit for now, Rogue. Keeping their eye focused on the engage. Odawamne hovering around, playing with the vision. Rogue. Spotted out. Yeah, Rogue just going step by step, walk into the river, clear out the vision, back to mid wave, push into mid wave, back to Baron, threaten it. It's just a seesaw effect, and Rogue stepping up now. Levi's trying to get the wave, a little bit of poke coming out of style, comp stashing forwards here, seeing if anyone oversteps from Gam, but I think Rogue gonna push it this wave and then look to start forcing this, make Gam come into them. And look at Malrun. He was looking for possible flank angles. He's running around with his Umbral Glaive, trying to sweep out any of the vision here, see if they can have any access to the back line. It is so important that Rogue's cooldowns take out at least one member of GAM before the fight breaks out. The orb spots it out. They know they're on this. Levi's Burning. just getting midway. Kathy's basing. Are they giving this? I don't think he's going to be in time to smite 5K. this. Lower and lower. Rogue, are they going to burn? Are they going to turn? What is the call going to be? It's a little bit split here at the moment. They do manage to grab it. Levi coming in over the wall. GAM, they know that they have to take this fight. Odawamne fishing for the angle. He's going to knock up two. Tom Ketch locked down. Will devour the bars, but off to the side. The Camille getting shredded. She goes gold and Levi in the backside with the Oriana, but she's so damn strong. Camille trying to get out to safety. Oh, no, it no, no, go. Is disaster for GAM. Sombrero on the shockwave. Does not matter. It's a double for Larson. Rogue taking the fight, taking the ace. It's a clean ace. They don't lose a single point person on the side of Rogue, and with that Baron buff, they're gonna charge right through Gam space. Rogue found the window to start off the Baron, they got it before Levi could arrive. Gam were a little bit split up trying to dive, Malrang and Odo buying time, but it's the carries of Rogue that pull through, the double threat comp stands tall, and Rogue, it looks like they're gonna pick up this game. At the end of the day, Rogue, Gam did so much work to hold them, to stop them from getting anything else in the match, but it was not enough. They stole one Baron. Rogue would not let it be two. Rogue moving up to 2-0 in the group. Eventually, oh, as it looks like they're playing for a bit of fun. They're playing for a little bit of disrespect, and that's the 2-0 for Rogue. I think the turning point for this game was that Hextech soul, that pick on Takati that actually just nailed the coffin ready for Gam. It just became so hard to give a soul over so late into the game. They crawled their way back from that early deficit of losing all those outer towers and Larson and Comp being so ahead. Kiaya was doing such a good job of just keeping Odoamne under wraps and looking for numbers advantage to pressure the map. You highlighted it so well, but Rogue still stand tall and they managed to find a way on top. Yeah, up until that last point, Gam had made so many good calls around objectives. You know, not yep. fighting the unnecessary ones, pushing out on side lane, being able to get uh, the extra advantage there. But when it all comes down to it, Rogue make the pick, they take down that victor, and they take home the win. The later and later we got into the game, the higher and higher the stakes became. One pick on the bot side, Levi being a little bit too long in the mid lane, that's all it took for Rogue to find the win. These little things add up to such big advantages. Heartbreaker for game. They fought back way better today than they did yeah. yesterday. It is progress. We saw more from them today, but still, at the start 0-2, very difficult. Rogue have just been steamrolling everybody, you know? 3 O's in the LEC, winning it, coming here to World, pumping this group. It's, it's so undefeated, good for them. Took them down. Gam, I, th I will admit, I think, Rogue will look back on this game and say, how did we slow it down so much? We got those outers, and then the game just went for about 10, 15 minutes to a pace where Gam could crawl their way back, look for top tier ones, try to contest these drakes, slow them down, and they got to the point where they found item break points, and all of a sudden, Victor was up a level, you know, you had some contest coming through, but there was the soul that just kind of, I think, that really sealed the deal. Well, I think we agree it's the soul. We can find out with the desk <laughs> thing, Stash of the boys standing by. What, what was your guys' take on that particular game? Why are you doing a podcast? <laughs> My friend told me to do that IRL. <laughs> what? 
What? What's up, everybody? It's E Dash <laughs> and the boys. This is the boys. Like, what? What's up, boys? Wait, I don't know. You're like I'm Vogue. You're actually. Yeah, you know, hey, there yeah, you yeah. go. You <laughs> both actually don't know. Which no. which, which friend oh, told Kobe really to do funny. that? That's the big question. Uh, Rogue, pull it out in the end. But let's talk about it because it wasn't easy considering how dominant it looked from the early portions of the game. Malrung absolutely popping off for the squad on the Jarvan made it look like an open and shut case. And. This is exactly what Maorang has been doing in the LEC all split long, and this is what he did here. Uh, from incredibly well-timed early ganks to uh, item builds that really defy uh, any imagination <laughs> with the... Uh, Umbro Glaive, baby. Yeah, he went Barmy Cinder into, <laughs> into Dirk. Not something you see very often, but really got everyone on Rogue off on the right foot. Yeah, I mean, look, the fact that you end up getting Rogue into position where they're starting to stack these early dragons, starting to look well, that was where I started to go, okay, Rogue, this is going to be a very quick game. We're going to look really good. But then as we started to crest into the mid game, that's where it started all to get a little bit shaky. And I have to credit Gam in this moment as well. I think they were really good at kind of understanding what their win conditions were in the moment. They didn't try yeah. and fight for third dragon. They let that one sit. They were like, we're going to play for late. We've got great scaling on our composition. So at this stage, then we'll look for picks ahead of fourth Drake. Don't let Rogue set up for the Baron fight. Or sorry, for the four dragon fight. And they actually looked really good when they got that pick with Kiana. Yeah, and to kind of answer the cashless questions, like, what does the desk think the turning point was? I agree, like, the nail in the coffin was the Hextech soul, but every point in the game is equally as important. If they don't get that first blood because mm. Marang's ganking early, they're never in position to have soul point to get soul originally. And then also Kiaya in the top lane, if he doesn't pop off so much on the Camille, they just get blown out of this game entirely. So that was one of the most competitive games you've actually seen all group stage. Yeah, again, which is just wild because of how it started. But here we'll get a look at that mid game and where Gam was able to find a couple of brilliant skirmishes uh, to end up bringing it back to a close contest. And as good as I think the team fighting was uh, from Gam, especially considering I think it's really hard to fight into the rogue composition because it is yeah. such a strong front to back team fight comp. Um, and how well this was set up as well, being able to get the steal, actually getting anything done with the Baron afterwards, I think could have been a true breaking point for Rogue, but they were unable to do so. Yeah, I mean, one of the big reasons for that was the fact that mid turb was still up. They couldn't really get themselves into a position where they could actually threaten the base. But I do want to give a shout out to Gaia again in these fights. Like, every single time he was getting access to the key carry that he needed. Like, when it was Maorang right before Fort Dragon spawn, you could see there in the back of the Baron pit as well, he was running amok on the carries. Like, Gaia had a fantastic performance and was the reason that so much that Gam were able to stay in this game for so long. Yeah, super impressed with Kiaya. Super happy to see that fight out of Gam, even if they weren't able to get the win, because it does uh, make me believe that they will continue to make this group very interesting. That's enough out of us. We're joining Shocks on the stage with the undefeated Trimby for our Verizon post-game interview. Thank you very much, Dash. Indeed. Um, and a lot of the fans hung out as well to hear this interview. And I even spotted some Trimby signs. Have you well, have you noticed yeah. that? OK, I didn't see them, unfortunately. My eyesight is pretty bad. Actually. But I saw them. <laughs> They're really there. Uh, okay, Trimby, nice. uh, let's talk about this game then. Fantastic start. What happened then? Uh, I mean, we just grieved. OK. <laughs> like, not, not much to be said. But uh, enemy team for sure played well. I would say that. They're doing really good with controlling the vision. Overall, like Graves is just annoying, right? right? Umbro Grave just clearing whatever word I'm thinking, trying to creatively put. He just clears it with one auto, pretty sad, but it Aww. is what it is. So, uh, yeah, there was not really much to do. We were stuck in drags, and I think the game should have ended on like fourth drag because we should have had all of them, but we like grieved one drag, I think it was the second. Then we got caught and there was not the greatest fight. Then we forced Nash, right? And then Nash should, be our, should have been ours, but then we misplayed. So there was a lot of stuff that didn't go our way, but yeah, at the end of the day, we won. And I think we tried to play our game. And for most part, I think we did. It was just some misplays that should have never happened, but well, I'd rather happen them now than later, right? Yeah. So I don't really mind. It's a good point. Um... Rogue time, though, we, you know, yeah. it's it's crept in my mind. Yeah, I was wondering if I'm you sure were thinking people were already well. tweeting out, out it. So it's like, yeah, I mean, overall, just I'm not sure because rogue time is like a weird thing, right? I don't personally believe it. I don't really care. It's like it's just rogue time. I guess people really wanted to, you know, try to make something up. But yeah, uh, I guess there are some reasons right right now to not believe that we're going to get out of groups after this game. So, yeah. 
for don't, everybody. Don't need to downplay yourself. I think you've had a great start. Um, but talking about it, of course, you were here last year as well. And, and I know we've talked a lot about how you're very hard on yourself. You have a lot of criticism for yourself. Um, how much of a different player do you feel you are in your approach to this year's World Championship? Uh, I don't think much happened. I think I just kind of understood how to like work with it, I would say. And more, most, most likely just like make sure that I'm fully aware of what like my feelings are, how I, how I am, and just overall try to like work with it and try to make sure I'm just trying to give my, my 100% every day. And yeah, I think it's been, it's been getting better and better and I just need to work on that still. And yeah, overall now just need to practice so we can get like to the best shape possible, right? It's like the best tournament that we can get in, during the year. So yeah, we're working quite hard to get here. So I need to work a little bit harder to make it work. Mm -hmm. uh, people have noticed and I think, um, you know, in the past sometimes people have been like, oh, Rogue, until they win a title, this or that. But I've seen so many EU fans really rally behind you guys, specifically on EU. I wanted to ask about your feelings about the meta read, because as we've seen more teams go away from necessarily the, the bot lane, strong, dominant picks. We've seen EU just going for the Lucianami priority, et cetera. Uh, you guys with the Callista as well. Do you feel that EU generally has had a different meta read and do you feel it's been better in the beginning? Uh, I mean, for sure, the EU meta that we experienced, like for last two best of fives at least, was way different than people expected from different regions, I would say. So it was, yeah, it was something that I don't think many expected outside of, outside of EU. And uh, right now, I think the meta is just pretty versatile. I don't think the like, engaged supports are like the best, the best of mm -hmm. the best, but I uh, do think that sometimes you just have to play them and that's just it. And you know, that's, that's how life works. So <laughs> it's, I'm really fine with it. I always like playing engaged supports and it's pretty weird that now I'm like known or like just, you know, people recognize me with like champs like Soraka. It's like so, to me, it's so weird. Yeah, honestly. like Assassin Soraka. Just yeah, I mean, in. you know, throwing some silence out in there, just healing up to full HP in like one Q. Yeah, I mean, I don't mind. It's <laughs> fun. You're doing your job. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say to the crowd that was cheering very hard for you today? Uh, honestly. <laughs> okay. Honestly, at first, I thought the the theater that we're in is. Gonna, it's quite small, honestly, I just saw that first. But then I came here and the fans are making it really beautiful. It's so beautiful, such a nice experience. <laughs> they sure are. It's so nice. Like, They're I would so never... loud, right? Uh, uh, sorry? They're so loud, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just, I don't know, like, it's so packed. Like, the whole theater is so packed and, I don't know, it's just lovely to be here. And I don't really feel like we're not in EU, you know, like, uh, we're, I think it's pretty nice and fans are not one-sided. I mean, I... <laughs> I didn't play against an A yet, but I don't have, I don't have one in my group, so yeah. I don't know how it is. <laughs> we'll see. But, yeah. Like, I'm not sure how it is then, but for now, yeah, it's been a pleasure. It has been. It's also been a pleasure seeing you at World so far. Thank you so much, Thank Trimby. You. Thank you to our awesome crowd for the cheers all the time. We're going to kick it over to a quick break, but when we come back, it'll be our Mercedes-Benz featured matchup, Thunder Thieves versus Gen G. Don't go anywhere. Wave flashing in the waiting arms, they're gonna burst him down, it's gonna be a quick kill, but Levi now gonna look to respond with the result. Now the flag, the drag, oh, one, Tom gets the kill. Oh, he's going back, rinse and repeat. Malhang is just so damn effective at impacting the early game whenever he gets this character. Levi over the wall, oh, maybe three can't get lower the spear, so they're gonna get oh, 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 damn, they find it! Oh, one now, get into the fight, but here comes a the victor, they're all trapped, they're all caught, and the mix of an absolute slaughter, this victor! Hey guys, we win, we win nothing. Behind 21 epic days of epicness. Behind 1 billion hours of drop joys. Behind every match, every broadcast, every moment at League of Legends World Championship 2022 is the network capable of making it all happen. The Cisco Network, a.k.a. The Realm. Cisco, powering the future of esports.